What's up, everybody? Welcome to a Saturday morning edition of The Squeeze. I am Tyler Conium. The first day of the NFL Divisional Playoffs is over. The Chiefs won. Um, Patrick Mahomes, very interesting what going, what going on there. What's going on there? We'll see. And the Philadelphia Eagles absolutely destroyed the New York Giants, so our Super Bowl exacta is dead. But as expected, but because we played the parlay, we made that money back there, so no harm, no foul. It was a good day yesterday. Hopefully you do follow me on Twitter because one of my bets yesterday was the Philadelphia 76ers minus three and a half over the Sacramento Kings, and throughout the day we learned that James Harden was going to be out, Joel Embiid was going to be out, and the line went just completely the other way, and I cashed that out. I think we lost maybe half a unit there, but uh, if you follow me on Twitter, I mentioned just to catch there. They still did win the game, but they didn't cover the uh, initial bet, which is fine. Um, and that's just sort of the way it goes when, again, I make most of my picks the night before, around 10 o'clock p.m. before. And then I'm making these videos like right now it's 8.45 in the morning. I'm making these videos. So sometimes things like that will happen throughout the day. And I do update because, you know, I'm not going to take the L there when uh, I'm, I've cashed out that bet. So officially a 2-0 and day, up two units. We got the under right between the Vancouver Canucks and the Edmonton Oilers. That game finished 4-2, to which was perfect. We also got the uh, parlay of the Chiefs and the Eagles. We laid 1.75 units there, and we did win that bet back. Had a pretty good day overall as well. We hit the under of the Avs and the Kraken. We hit the minus 4.5 for the Eagles in the first half, which they were up 28 nothing. Blew past that. I wish I had a bet more there. Um, we had the under between the Leafs and the Canadians at plus 105. So it was a pretty good day overall. Nothing to complain about. And now here we are on a Sunday. Three more bets, three different sports once again. Of course, um, the big talk of the day is going to be football. That will we will get to last. I'm going to start in the NBA and start with the New York Knicks at the Toronto Raptors. Now, this, when I bet this last night, I bet the Knicks on the money line. Last night, it was plus 108 at FanDuel. It's now minus 108 at FanDuel. Still like that bet. It's still essentially even money. And I'm actually a little bit surprised. So the New York Knicks and the Toronto Raptors will play tonight. The Raptors coming off a loss last night to Boston, who was without Jason Tatum. They lost 106-104. It was a pretty ugly game. They're not... I don't know what's going on with the Toronto Raptors right now. They've lost three straight. There's turmoil. There's locker room chemistry. That's a problem. They're just not playing very good basketball at all. The New York Knicks come into this game also on a three-game losing streak. So something's got to give. And I believe that it's going to be uh, the Knicks that will buck that trend and get the win. So they're 4-1-1 ATS in their last six following a loss of more than 10 points. And the Knicks are also 4-1 ATS in their last five Sunday games. The Toronto Raptors are 1-4 in four ATS in their last five home games versus a team with a winning road record against each other. Um, the over is 5-2 and two the last seven times. I don't know if these teams are going to score a lot of points. Um, the Knicks haven't historically played great in Toronto. However, again, the Raptors are coming off a back-to-back from last night. OG Ananobi had to leave the game, did not return. I doubt he's going to play today. You have the Knicks who have not played a game since... Um, two days ago, and it was in Atlanta. So they've had time to rest up. They've come to Toronto. They've got a 14-9 and road record versus Toronto's 14-12 and home record. The Raptors were very good at home to start this season. Not so good anymore. Knicks are 24-21 ATS. And they're, just, they're just a better basketball team right now. And in terms of injuries, they're dealing with um, Mitchell Robinson till mid-February with a thumb injury. Then you look at the Raptors. You've got Delano Banton, questionable. OG Ananobi is questionable. Fred Van Fleet is questionable. And, of course, Otto Porter is out for the season. So will Fred Van Fleet play on the second half of this back-to-back? It's probably... He will not. Of course, Boston was the bigger game that they wanted to get. And now you've got OG Ananobi who's left the game. So I like the New York Knicks just straight up in this game. It's around even money. So I'm going to take the New York Knicks on the money line, plus 108 at FanDuel. Now, going to the NHL, where we've been very successful this year. There's a couple matchups that I quite like. The first one is between the San Jose Sharks and the Boston Bruins. The Bruins, as we all know, 36-5. and They're the best team by far in the NHL. They're 29-16 and ATS. I really like that. Um, the San Jose Sharks did play last night. So it's, it seems like an auto-fire to once again bet the puck line. But it's juicy. It's minus 125 on the puck line for the Bruins to win by two or more goals. That's a lot to pay for that. So what I'm going to do is take that and I'm going to parlay it with 
the Vegas Golden Knights also on the money line. So Vegas tonight is playing the Phoenix Coyotes. Both teams played last night. So last night, Vegas beat the Washington Capitals 6-2. to Arizona lost 4-1 to to Dallas. So Vegas is going from Vegas, just hopping over to Arizona. They're not very far away at all, whereas Arizona is coming from Dallas to Arizona. So both teams converging into Arizona, but Vegas just coming from one state over, whereas the Coyotes are coming up from Dallas. That coupled with the fact that, well, Vegas is a hell of a lot better. They're 29 and 16 and 15 and 3 on the road. The Coyotes are one of the worst teams in the NHL, 14 and 27, and they're only 8 and 7 at home. So this is sort of... Um, not a lot of analysis to do here. I just think between the Boston Bruins being the Boston Bruins at home against one of the worst teams in the Sharks who played last night, I'm just going to take them to win the game. Vegas Golden Knights, little bit of travel versus one of the worst teams in the league who had more travel, both playing last night. Mix them both on a money line parlay and you get plus 103 at score bets. You're getting plus money for both of those teams to win on the money line. I like it. And now we're going to cap it off with an NFL matchup. I am... I'm going to have a few irons in the fire here just in general. I think I'm going to do a Bills 49ers parlay. It's around even money. I think I then might take the Bengals and the Cowboys on the money line to sort of cover that. Maybe play around with some spreads and try to hit both. Like maybe we take the Bengals plus six and the Cowboys plus four and a half. And then if the 49ers and the Bills of that could cash, you could cash a whole bunch of tickets. So I like those, but these are tough games. Not like yesterday. Yesterday was... Fairly straightforward with Chiefs and Eagles. Today is a lot more difficult. I could see any one of these four teams winning. So I'm going to stay away from all of that for now. And I'm just going to go with a player prop. I'm going to go with Dak Prescott to throw over 1.5 touchdowns for minus 106. A lot of people are expecting the 49ers to completely steamroll the Dallas Cowboys. I just don't think it's going to happen this year. And... Listen, everything points to that. The Cowboys are essentially the Toronto Maple Leafs of the NFL. They can't win a playoff game. Dak Prescott's leading the league in interceptions. He's been terrible. But the 49ers have Brock Purdy. I I think the 49ers win this game, but I don't think it's going to be something like we saw last night in Philadelphia. I don't think it's going to be 38-7. I think the Cowboys can keep this a lot closer. I think their defense is a lot better. And when you look at Dak Prescott, and he's him throwing touchdowns. So last week against Tampa Bay, he threw four. Previous to that, at Washington, he threw one. But then you're looking at two, three, three, one at Houston, three, two, two, three, and two. So more often than not, he's throwing touchdown passes. I do not think that the Dallas Cowboys are going to be able to run on the San Francisco 49ers. I think there's a good chance the San Francisco sends. The 49ers are out to an early lead, which is going to encourage them to throw the ball a little bit more. Yes, there's some danger with him throwing a pick, but I do like the Cowboys to score at least two touchdowns, and I look for them both to come through the air. So I'm going to take Dak Prescott over one and a half touchdown passes for minus 106 at FanDuel. So let's run back down this card. I like the New York Knicks on the money line for plus 108 at FanDuel. I like the Boston Bruins and the Vegas Golden Knights on a money line parlay, plus 103 at score bet. And I like Dak Prescott to throw two or more touchdowns. That is minus 106 at FanDuel. Feel free to drop a comment if you're fading or following. As always, follow me on Twitter at Tyler Connie, where I'm going to post more picks and props throughout the day. Audio versions available on Apple Podcasts and on Spotify. Yesterday was an amazing day of sports. I expect today to be something similar. Let's talk about it. Have a good Sunday.